I saw a story in the local paper. It said an 83-year-old woman was marrying an 87-year-old man. I thought, oh, that's not going to last. <laughs> I worry about my nan. If she's alone in the house and she falls, does she make a noise? <laughs> I'm joking. She's dead. <laughs> I do try and see the positive when something bad happens. You know, if somebody close to you dies, it's always a good idea. Move seats. <laughs> I remember when my nan was really ill in hospital, we went to visit her in Limerick in Ireland. Went over to see her and it was, you know, near the end and the doctor came out and he said to us, he said, uh, he said, oh no, she's, uh, she's very bad now. She, uh, she can't breathe without oxygen. <laughs> I thought, where did you get your medical degree? The internet. <laughs> All I'm saying is every cloud has got a silver lining. You can always see the fun in something, even if it's, you know, something tragic and terrible. You know, we've all been to funerals, haven't we? We've all been to a funeral at some stage. It's a very sad event. But, you know, every cloud has a silver lining. You know, and a, a relative, an elderly relative at death's door is a day off waiting to happen. <laughs> What's a funeral? It's about an hour. <laughs> Tends to be in the morning. The rest of the day is your own. <laughs> I don't want you to judge me, ladies and gentlemen, but when my nana died, we went bowling. <laughs> Not immediately on hearing the news, <laughs> but that afternoon after the funeral, we went bowling. You know, life goes on. Not hers, obviously. <laughs> she was in a box on fire. I was on fire. Three strikes. <laughs> Just about cracked a smile, but it really took some effort. <laughs> What's your name, madam? What's your name? It's not the telly. I can, I can see you. <laughs> What's your name? Camilla, and what do you do, Camilla? I suppose it depends on the guy. <laughs> I'm only messing about. Just you look all dressed up for this sort of show, this kind of filth. Maybe he told you, well, we're going to go and see a theatre show in the West End of London. You went, fucking brilliant. <laughs> you probably didn't even say fucking. You probably went, marvellous. <laughs> Mar the West End of London, a theatre show. This will be, oh, a bit of class. And he's finally, and then you, this, and you're going, for fuck's sake. <laughs> the ticket and how do you two know each other that's your mum well you 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 don't you, you don't even look like you look as if you could be sisters <laughs> you don't look young she looks fucking old <laughs> you let yourself go. I can't help myself it's some sort of trap I love the fact you've just turned around to go does she <laughs> I'll never forget what my granddad said to me I shit in a bag, please kill me. <laughs> old bit, I can see a couple of, a couple of kind of older gentlemen. How old are you, sir? You look a little bit older than... Yeah. 70. 70. Well, 70's quite old, I think. Yeah, nice to have you here, sir. Nice age range. What do you do? Nothing, man. <laughs> Fine, well, you, you've earned that, frankly. <laughs> Some of these fucking layabouts. <laughs> I bet it was different in your day, wasn't it? <laughs> 70, I bet you were loving the anti German stuff, weren't you? <laughs> yeah, fuck them. <laughs> you know what? PC or no PC, we won it fair and square. <laughs> the thing I was going to say was I've been, I've been told this once. Have you ever said to anyone, yeah, the problem with your generation, you think you invented sex. You ever said that to anyone? No. Yeah, my granddad said it to me. He said, the problem with you lot, you think you invented sex. I said, all right, granddad. Have you ever fucked Nana up the arse, pulled out and come on her tits? <laughs> Turns out he had. That's what killed her. <laughs> What's the matter with that? <laughs> and don't you dare be offended by that, you know, by there being a 70-year-old man. I bet you were crazy for it in the war. 
<laughs> Jesus, what, are there being a war on? I bet you got more poon tang <laughs> in those years. Yeah, we could all die tomorrow. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's the best chat-up line in the world. <laughs> Who are you here with? She looks mortified. You all right? I'm glad... I can only apologise for the last bit of material about the... the granddad with the bum sex and the coming. <laughs> because I imagine what I've created is the longest journey home ever. <laughs> Yeah, Dad, I enjoyed the show. Let's never talk again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know this isn't particularly PC, but I still can't forgive the Germans for the way they treated my granddad during the war. Passed over for promotion time and time again. <laughs> On Remembrance Sunday, do spare a thought for the German ex servicemen. At least our old soldiers are remembering winning. <laughs> now shit's their day out. I was in Germany recently doing a comedy gig. I was flown out there to do one of these corporate gigs. I thought, comedy, Germany, it's missionary work. <laughs> went out there, did, you know, did a comedy gig. The gig went fine, but on the way back, there was about a three-hour delay at the airport. Now, I thought, that's not a problem, you know. I've got an iPod and a computer. I was quite, you know, busying myself. I was quite happy. The guy I was travelling with, the guy that organised the corporate gig, was livid with this three-hour delay. And he said, with no hint of irony, he said, yeah, say what you want about Hitler. <laughs> At least when he was around, the trains ran on time. <laughs> I thought, yeah, but think about where they were going. <laughs> Are there any couples in this evening? Give us a shout, the couples. Yeah. Oh, lots of couples in tonight. This is a bit silly, I think. Uh, but for Valentine's, I got my girlfriend sex vouchers as her present. <laughs> I didn't realise they were transferable. <laughs> Turns out they accept them at her work. <laughs> you get to the stage in a long-term relationship where you want to experiment sexually, but, you know, it can be awkward. And what if she finds out? <laughs> I'm ten years into a relationship now. Anyone be there anyone longer than ten years? Yes. What's the longest we've got in the room? Thirteen. Th Thirteen? Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Anyone more than twenty-six? Twenty-eight? More than 28? How, how long? For, sorry? You, you've, been you've been together for 43 years. I think, come on, 43 years. Now, I obviously, I don't know what it's like after 43 years. I think that's an extraordinary commitment, especially in this day and age. That is quite something. But I don't know if it's the same for you, because I've only been together with my girl for 10 years. But things have got quite predictable in the bedroom. <laughs> Now, when I lower my entire ball bag into her mouth, <laughs> she is pretty much guaranteed to wake up. <laughs> Same? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you couldn't see that? He just went, yeah, say. <laughs> you look worried on their behalf. They've been married 43 years. Don't panic. They've tried everything. <laughs> What's your relationship with them? What, how do you know them? That's your mum and dad. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> well, I hope the image of your dad teabagging your mum hasn't... <laughs> I hope. I, for one... <laughs> I don't know about looking your parents in the eyes again. I don't think you'll be able to drink tea. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Shit, sorry. This, is, this will be hard for you to believe. I used to be a gentleman. I didn't used to talk about my sexual exploits, even with close friends. Never kiss and tell. Always just keep, you know, keep it private. It's private life for a reason. Private. Now, I'll talk about anything. It's great for me because it's a catharsis, but also I think it's good for everyone because you talk about things, everyone feels a bit more open and a bit more normal because, you know, there's weird things. Here's an example of an intimate detail I don't mind sharing with you. My girlfriend can't have orgasms during intercourse, but it's not a problem because I can. <laughs> I gave my girlfriend an orgasm and she spat it back in my face. <laughs> Hi, I'm 
Jimmy Carr, the guy you just saw in that video. Thanks for watching it, because uh, somehow I get money from that. I, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know. But probably, probably it filters through some sort of advert that you watched before you watched the video, maybe. Or maybe you subscribed. Anyway, thanks for watching it. And somehow that benefits me. And hopefully I'll see you at a live show at some point further down the sunny road. Good luck.